Sassoon Marsh is um, kind of a hidden gem in the Bay Area landscape. I think it's a very large open space. If you want to get outdoors and have this sense of kind of a vast expanse around you where there's flocks of birds flying and there's fish in the water, there's tule elk, which are very large, impressive animals. There's a herd of them on Grizzly Island, all kinds of water birds, and also a number of plant species that are uh, really nice, especially in the springtime. Over 80% is privately owned land. The Duck Clubs definitely uh, have done a miraculous you know, job of fighting down development and keeping the marsh intact. Still being an open space, still being green for a very long time. The management structure um, is set up so that water flowing into the marsh freshens the marsh primarily to benefit ducks and there are other benefits to other species but you know the focus is on ducks. The Sioux Marsh is a very studied landscape. There's been probably hundreds of papers written in all or in part on Sassoon Marsh. And so this book takes the best information we have, ties it together, and um, it's done by authors who are specialists in their fields. Looking forward, the kind of management that's going on there now is, uh, is not necessarily setting the marsh up well for a positive future with multi-species benefits, the kind that we've been enjoying there for the last century. We're already seeing issues with kind of the edge lands on the outer side, uh, you know, having more inundation, having less ability to control what's happening inside of the levees and properties that are being abandoned or where they're having to work very, very hard to maintain them. There's subsidence issues, which means that as sea level rises, it's more and more likely to be inundated by water and um, potentially, if we don't manage it well, it could be turned into open water habitat and that might be okay for fishes. And you know, if we could increase sediment inputs, perhaps we could build back the marsh, but it would be very expensive, time-consuming, and unpredictable. There's a lot of um, potential for restoration in Sassoon Marsh uh, of the marsh plain itself. Ryer Island's a good example. The dikes there were breached several decades ago, and it's managed to actually accrete and build marsh plain faster than sea level rise. And now it's um, at sea level again when historically it was lower. Another thing about the marsh is that even though we don't hear as much about it, what happens in Sassoon Marsh can affect what happens with water throughout the rest of the state of California because Sassoon Marsh has minimum water requirements so that the marsh can have enough water flowing out of the delta into the marsh, keeping it fresh to maintain the desired species. This book is written for scientists, for citizen scientists, for policy makers, um, people involved in landscape management. It's also written for locals who enjoy learning more about the area they live in. And so this book is really about problem solving in this landscape. Sassoon Marsh cannot be all things to all people, but I think we do have the potential to keep it as a really special place.